What's up everyone, Pia here from Into Fly Fishing and in this video we'll be looking at 10 of the best saltwater flies out there. We spent 5 days fishing here in the Maldives, testing each one of these flies at different species. This video is brought to you by Snowby. We fished two of their saltwater specific rods. Firstly, the new Spectre RMX Saltwater Predator Rod. This is an 8 weight rod and it's ideal for species like bonefish and other reef species. The other rod we fished is the 10 weight Prestige GXS Saltwater Rod and it really performed well on Giant Trevally and Bluefin. Now with that out of the way, let's look at the 10 specific flies and we're starting here at the smaller side of things. The first fly is called the Crazy Charlie. Now right here, the Crazy Charlie is tied in a color combination that we call the Pillow Talk. It's got a red nose and it has a white over tan little wing. And this is a very good color combination for reef species and bonefish. The Crazy Charlie is one of the best saltwater flies out there if you're targeting smaller fish species. It is a very light fly and it has dumbbell eyes here at the bottom and in this case it's tied with bee chain eyes and it is ideal for rod weights from about a 7 to a 9. The way you fish this fly depends on the species that you're targeting. If you are fishing it to bonefish, cast way up ahead of them, leading them in the line that they're traveling in, and then as it lands on the bottom, you just make a long, slow strip and you'll see the fish respond. If they do respond, they'll come over to the fly immediately, then you may give it another long strip, or even a shorter strip, but it's very slow. You need to try and fish it on the bottom in this case. Then as the fish pins it, you just sit with a straight stripping set and then the fish is on. However, what makes this fly really great is it even can resemble a little bait fish, a small tiny bait fish. So if you see some bluefin or even some permit cruising around, it's a good idea to cast way up ahead of them again, and just strip to keep it sort of suspended in the middle of the water and then the fish will come and eat it. One of my new favorite flies is called the turnef crab. This fly is specifically tied for trigger fish and permit, but I've also seen parrotfish, emerald parrotfish being caught on it. It's really a weird looking fly, but it's very, very effective. It's very easy to tie, which is why I like it, and it resembles a crab, and if you strip it quite fast, it can even resemble a little shrimp. It has two massive eyes, typical of big crabs or crabs that you'll find in the tropics, and it's tied with big dumbbell eyes to get the fly down. Crabs obviously live on the bottom and that's where the fish feed on them. So if you see fish tailing, just throw this fly at them in advance and let them intercept it. A great thing or a very unique thing about this fly is that it has this um, spun deer hair weed guard. It's, very, um, it's a very unique thing, as I said, and you also see this technique used on a fly called the bonefish bitters. It's a very good fly. It's odd looking, so it works great on trigger fish. I just believe odd looking flies work best on odd looking fish. And it's certainly one of the best and easier to tie crab patterns out there. If I had to have one small saltwater fly on this Maldives strip, it would be this, the spawning shrimp. It worked so great. I think I'm literally gonna tie a dozen of these or two dozen and just come with this fly next time I come here. I've caught giant trevally on this. I've had a trigger fish eat it. You can catch bonefish on it. All the reef species, bluefin trevally. You can catch permit on it. It's really such a versatile rod, a fly to keep on your rod if you don't know what species you'll target. The spawning shrimp is fished in a very similar way to the crazy charlie in the sense that it is very versatile in the way that you can fish it. So if you're fishing to species that feed off the bottom, you can just cast to them. Like I caught a goat fish that was feeding on a white sand flat and I cast it up ahead and on the first strip the fish just came and it ate it and then you just once again strip with a, the straight set. But if you do see species swimming in the middle of the water, bluefin trevally again or permit or anything like that, you can cast it up ahead and strip it relatively fast so that they can come up and eat it in the midwater. No tropical fly box is complete without this, the Alflexo crab. It really has become such a effective and well-known fly and it really catches fish. If you're targeting any fish like permit, bonefish, especially trigger fish, this is an absolutely must-have. 
the fly fish is the best on the bottom so if you see a fish tailing on turtle grass or on coral or on the sand this is a great fly to cast way up ahead of them and then let the current swing it towards the fish or intercept the fish and then just give it a little strip or two and the fish will come up and eat it. Probably one of the best permit flies in the world is called the Avalon shrimp. I believe it works so well because it has all of the movement in the world so it's like it is so mobile underwater. Even if you leave it suspended on the bottom and the, there's a little bit of current, the fly just moves. And this is done by attaching two pieces of zonka strip on the side of the hook shank. So what that does is as soon as you strip it, the zonka folds together and when you stop, they fold out again. It's a relatively heavy fly so you fish it on the bottom to fish that are feeding on the bottom but you can strip it relatively fast for, for mid-water species. Moving from the smaller flies and the crustaceans to the bait fish and the larger flies, this one is right there in the middle, it's called the clouser. And if there is one fly, if you can only take one fly on any saltwater strip, this would be it, the clouser minnow. This is a chartreuse over white, I just believe in it. Like they say, if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use and this is really a, such a great great fly another great color combination is tan over white and olive over white especially the olive over white works really well if you're fishing over turtle grass and this imitates a little bait fish it's very easy to cast so if you're fishing into heavy headwinds put on a clouser and you'll be able to penetrate your cast slightly better and as soon as it lands just Regain control, tighten your leader, and just give it a couple of short strips, even long strips. This fly even works well if it's stripped on the bottom for bottom feeding fish. Great fly, don't leave for any saltwater trip without a clouser minnow. Now we're moving into the larger fly domain, and this is my first favorite pattern. It's called the EP baitfish. It has a couple of names, and you can probably tie it with various synthetic fibers. Because it's tied with synthetic fibers, it doesn't retain water, so it's relatively easy to cast, and it lands very softly. So if you're fishing to fish species or schools of fish that are very skittish, this is a great option because as it lands, it doesn't plop around as much, and it then floats on the water. So if you're fishing towards fish and you made a very long cast up ahead of them, and you don't want the fly to get stuck to the bottom while you're waiting for, for them to intercept it, this is a great pattern. Cast it way up ahead, and then as soon as the fish are in the right spot, you start stripping it. Great color combinations is this, uh, black um, back with a blue or even a purple belly, but you can tie it more natural as well, like tan over white, olive over white, and even you can bring in some red gills. It's really a great, great fly pattern. Because we're using this fly, or all of these larger flies for, for bigger fish species, just make sure that these flies are tied on very, very solid hooks. This is an owner Aki. It's really strong. This is in a 6.0, and you can pull as hard as you humanly can on a fish and it won't come open. So that is the EP bait fish. If you're fishing for giant trevally or open any fly anglers box who regularly fishes for giant trevally or even any big fish species, but like I said, especially giant trevally, you'll definitely find this fly. This is called the Semper. So it has a schlap and tail, a little bit of flash or grizzly hackle just to give it an accent, but it's mainly a schlap and tail. And what makes it a semper is this beautiful marabou collar that you can tie in various colors. This is obviously in chartreuse and white, very effective color. We caught a lot of giant trevally on this specific color combination and it really works well in surf zones when there's a lot of bubbles. Other color combinations that work very effectively is um, purple and black, olive and red, and tan and white. Those are my favorite color combinations. This specific fly is tied on a Gamagatsu SL12 in a size 6.0. Once again, also a very strong hook and it has a thin wire so it penetrates into the fish's jaw a lot easier. Very similarly to the EP bait fish, you cast this fly way up ahead in the fish's feeding lane. You can really give it enough space. You don't have to cast the fly right on top of the fish. These fish can see and, and detect their prey from a very far distance. So cast way up ahead, I'm talking about 10 feet, 
20 feet, even 30 feet sometimes. And then as the fish sees it, you just start stripping. So I use long, fast strips first. Even double-handed strips work very effectively. And this marabou and schlapp and tail just has so much movement in the water. The two flies we just spoke about are my two favorite subsurface large fish flies. It's very, very exciting if you see a big fish eat on the surface. So that's why I regularly fish poppers. And one of the, my favorite poppers is called the crease fly. And this is a very large version. It actually has a little rattle in it if you listen to it. And it works very effectively for fish that are already turned on. It doesn't create a hectic amount of commotion on the surface like the next fly that we'll speak about. But it really has a great action and almost uh, erratic, frantic action. The way you fish this fly is cast way up ahead of the fish once again and give it a very erratic movement. That is what makes this fly so effective. So you can really punch it quick and it makes short jerks and it dives from side to side. And then once the fish eats, just keep stripping until you feel a solid hookup. If you want to pull big fish up from the deep or you want to create a lot of commotion and noise on the surface, there's no better fly than this, the double barrel popper. This is tied on a very big wide gape Kamagatsu SL12 8.0. So because it has a wide gape, if there's a big fish that comes to eat it, that wide gape will definitely find purchase somewhere in the fish's jaw. It has a very large profile, a lot of schlappen and marabou tied right behind this foam head. But the key and the, 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 the essence of this fly is this head. Once you strip it, it just dives down and it just creates massive movement and pushes so much water and just creates a big whoop, popping sound. And this is what draws fish up and makes it eat so aggressively. I hope that you found this video on my 10 favorite saltwater flies helpful. On your next saltwater trip, be sure to tie up or buy a box full of these and I'm sure that you'll have a lot of success targeting fish. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications if you'd like to see more tutorials like this. Until next time, cheers.